the nutrition community has not taken this issue seriously up until now. And so there haven't been many studies or really very few studies um, that are designed to actually test the question that I'm interested in, which is, you know, as we shifted, uh, you know, in starting in 1950 and onwards, as we shifted from a diet that was low in linoleic acid, and then as we changed to like an, a current American amount of linoleic acid in the diet, what happens then? And interestingly, um, he introduces just such a paper towards the end of the video. I'm going to get to that. I'm very excited about it. First, we're going to, we're going to, uh, think about a couple other things that he said, and we're going to put that all in context before we get to this exciting conclusion, this final, uh, video or this final paper. Linoleic acid is an essential fat. That means our body doesn't produce it. We need to get it from our food. That also means that whatever linoleic acid is in our body came from something we ate since we can't produce it. So we can measure people's linoleic acid levels in the body and see if that goes in the same direction as the dietary intake data. And what they found was an inverse relationship between circulating levels of omega-6s and inflammatory biomarkers. That means the higher the omega-6 levels in the body, the lower the inflammatory markers. He makes the correct point, which is that if you have high levels of linoleic acid circulating in your blood, you will have low levels of inflammation. That is a fact. There's no getting around it. This is due to a, a, a thing that I mentioned earlier. And so in, before I say that, he also says that linoleic acid is a biomarker that indicates um, consumption, how much you ate, right? And looking back over time, if you look in someone's blood and you look at their triglycerides and there's a high amount of linoleic acid, presumably they've been eating more linoleic acid. And that's true. That is, that's absolutely true. Um, there's a study that I really like called Epic Potsdam. Um, this is a long-term study in Germany and they're, the Epic study is even larger, but there's a great paper um, about Epic Potsdam and diabetes risk and desaturase activity. And I'll explain in the video what all those things mean. But one of the things, but, but in, this, uh, in that paper, what they look at is blood levels of all of these different fats and ratios between them. And what they show is that indeed, um, the more linoleic acid that you have in your bloodstream, the less likely you are to get diabetes. And of course, everyone who's watching this video's head's exploding because you think that I don't like linoleic acid, and I don't. Um, and how could I say that? And I actually wrote an article on my blog uh, called something along the lines of accumulating linoleic acid prevents diabetes about just this topic. And you can go back and read that if you want to catch up on the background info, but essentially what they showed, the other thing that they showed in that, uh, Epic Potsdam study was how well does linoleic acid predict blood levels? And the answer is not very well. So, your diet, so if you look at, the, at, a, at a general population and, and you find out how much uh, people are eating and then you compare it to your blood levels, the dietary levels predicts about 20% of the variation that you see in people's actual um, blood levels. And so that's not a very good predictor. It's a poor predictor. Conversely, there was a Mendelian randomization study and in, humans are hard to study. And so there's this, uh, this study called Mendelian randomization and it's a, it's, a, it's a statistical study and it looks at common genetic variations that people have and then it also looks at um, some other factor. Uh, so they'll look at like how much linoleic acid is in your blood um, and it'll compare it to risk of getting all of these diseases and through, you know, statistical methods, you can get a better idea that, okay, you know, this thing is, might, be, might be correlated with that disease outcome or that inflammatory outcome, 
but it doesn't necessarily cause it. Or this thing is correlated with that and it's likely to be causal. And so when you do, um, when you do Mendelian randomization, you can get an idea that, okay, this thing is not, this thing actually causes that thing, right? And so they did this study and they looked at all of these. So there's a whole bunch of diseases that are associated with low levels of uh, linoleic acid. So, and so this Mendelian randomization study showed that on a, on a population level, when you look at a whole bunch of people, on average in a, in a given area, they usually all on average eat about the same. And so you don't see huge variations in, in diet typically if you measure enough people. And so in that context, the amount of circulating linoleic acid is largely determined by the enzyme D6D, delta-6 desaturase. In the population at large, delta-6 desaturase is, is responsible for most of the variation in blood linoleic acid levels. And so what that means is people on average in the population People with more linoleic acid in their blood have fewer oxylipins. And people with less linoleic acid in their blood have more oxylipins. And the activity of delta-6, D6D, uh, delta-6 desaturase in multiple Mendelian randomization studies has been shown to be causal of diabetes, um, if you have high D6D activity, you are likely to have, you are likely to develop diabetes, um, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, this video is about inflammation and arthritis is an inflammatory disease. So if you have a high D6D, if you're converting a lot of linoleic acid to oxylipins, you are likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis. And so Gill introduces us to a very interesting paper. And he says, he says, yeah, well, there can be an interaction between linoleic acid and inflammation. Perhaps there are some genetic freaks out there. Um, you know, perhaps there are some genetic freaks out there who, in their case, if they eat linoleic acid, their inflammation numbers go up. Okay, so maybe eating seed oils is not inflammatory for most people, but maybe some people have a particular susceptibility. It's like that for most things. Why would this be any different? So there are some genetic studies looking at people with different mutations in that pathway we just looked at that converts linoleic acid to arachidonic acid and beyond. So they put people on a diet high in linoleic acid and people with one specific mutation, their CRP level trended to increase so it's possible that there is a subset of people, maybe the more extreme cases, that have a special susceptibility. And he points us out to this study. And the study is really interesting. It's actually perhaps the best nutrition study I've ever seen. It's, it's remarkable for a bunch of reasons. One is it's done in Finland. And I didn't realize this, but the sunflower oil and soybean oil have had very little penetration into Scandinavian, very far Northern European markets. And so if you look at Finland, if you look at Norway, if you look at Denmark, um, they don't eat much sunflower and soybean oil. They do eat, as I said before, more canola oil. They eat a fair amount of canola oil. But even that, they, they're simply not gulping down seed oils in the same way that Americans are. And so you have this population with very low baseline linoleic acid consumption, about 10 grams a day. And that's pretty low. That's about as low as you're going to find probably anywhere in the world these days. And so, so that's really interesting just to start. And, and by the way, so then I, that made me wonder... Uh, do these Northern European countries have low levels of diabetes? And of course they do. And if you graph them out, if you graph out all of Europe, at least all of Western Europe, um, diabetes levels versus 
uh, vegetable oil consumption, you can see there's a strong linear correlation. You know, Spain has the highest consumption of sunflower oil. Europe, they don't consume a lot of soybean oil. They mostly consume sunflower oil. Spain has the highest consumption of, of sunflower oil and the among the highest levels of diabetes in Europe, perhaps the highest levels. And the Scandinavian countries are all on the low end and they all eat low amounts of sunflower oil. And so, and low amounts of soybean oil. And so that is, you know, that doesn't prove anything, but it doesn't, it certainly does not do anything to disprove the idea um, that vegetable oils are, are perhaps involved in inflammation and diabetes progress. Anyway, back to the study. So they gave, so they, they first off, um, so this, this Delta six Delta, there are two copies in th that you can get of this gene, right? And so, so some people have a more active form of Delta six Delta. And that's actually what this poster behind me is. That's, that's the TT uh, form of the gene. And some people have the less active version of the gene. And that is the CC version. And let me try to get out of the way here. Um, so this is the less active version of the gene is the CC gene. Um, and so you can see Delta six Delta is up here. And I saw, I'm, I apologize, this graphic sucks. Uh, I'm not an artist. And so you have linoleic acid here becoming arachidonic acid. And this arachidonic acid ultimately becomes the oxylipins. And, and Delta six Delta is the enzyme that is the rate limiting factor in this becoming that. Okay. So, so Delta six Delta is converting little like acid oxylipins. And there is this, um, variant called RS one, seven, four, five, five, O. And you can either have, and so I have two groups of people here, and this is what this study, this is all results from this, uh, from this study. Um, what happens is, right, and, and when you watch Gill introduce it, it's like, oh, well, you know, there might be a few extreme cases of genetic freaks that have an increase of inflammation in response to, um, to eating more seed oils or eating more linoleic acid. And in fact, um, there are, and so that's over here. That's the CC genotype. And so... Interestingly, <laughs> people with a CC genotype are, these are the ones that are protected against um, diabetes. They have a low delta-6 delta activity level, they, which means they have high linoleic acid in their blood. They have low oxylipins because they're not converting this to this because this enzyme is going slowly, right? And so, so since they're not making these oxylipins, they have a low diabetes risk. Um, but interestingly, also, this is not a small percentage. This is about 20% of the people. This is about one person out of five um, has these good genes and are going to be protected from diabetes because they're not making oxylipins, right? And interestingly, those are the people who if you give them, and they did this in the study, they gave them, um, so what they do in the study is they take uh, these people from Finland who are on a, uh, you know, they're getting about 10 grams of linoleic acid a day. And then they, like, I think triple, they go up to like 30, I think at the end it's like 31 grams of, of linoleic acid a day. And like I say, in the American diet, we're consuming maybe, I don't know, call it 45 grams a day. That's about three tablespoons of soybean oil on average. That's about 50% um, linoleic acid. So just from the soybean oil alone in the American diet, you have 20 plus grams of linoleic acid. But then, you know, we also have some sunflower seed oil here and there and some canola oil here and there. And our chicken can be 35% linoleic acid. Uh, pork fat in the U.S. is typically 15-16% linoleic acid. And so their final ending number of around 30 grams a day 
of linoleic acid is probably pretty close to what I would say the American diet, the normal American diet is, right? And so, interestingly, this group with the good genetics that are protected from diabetes, one out of every five people, their inflammation levels go up significantly when, <laughs> when uh, their levels of linoleic acid go from this very low uh, Finland level to an American level. Okay? So get that in your head. The ones who genetically are protected from diabetes are the same ones whose inflammation levels go up if they increase omega-6 consumption. Now, here's the other group, TT, um, right? And so CC and TT, what that means is um, it, it just, it's, it's, this is, this C is one version of the gene, T is the other version of the gene. And so the C is the more active. And as you know, we have two copies of every gene. So, so one out of five people have two copies of the good gene, the, the less active version of D6D, which means uh, if you have two good copies of the genes, you'll convert less linoleic acid to oxylipins. Over here, these guys have two bad copies, right? And that's about one out of three people in, um, in Finland in this study. And I looked it up, by the way. Uh, there's a study about uh, the Chinese Han. And in, in them, uh, something like 42% of people have the bad copy of the gene. So, you know, when he talks about the genetic freaks, um, these people who are, are, okay, and so the TT over here are more likely, they have a more active D6D. So they convert more linoleic acid via D6D to oxylipins. And so, uh, so those TT people are likely to develop diabetes. They have high oxylipins, they have low linoleic acid, right? That's how it works. And in those people, when you give them linoleic acid, their CRP levels go down. So in the people that are most likely to get diabetes, if you give them linoleic acid, their CRP levels drop. So <laughs> if, so if you give someone more linoleic acid, more soybean oil, more sunflower seed oil, and their inflammatory numbers drop, that's actually a very bad thing. <laughs> that suggests that you're one of the one out of three people or the 42% of people, if you're a Chinese Han, that have two bad copies of the D6D gene, which in multiple Mendelian randomization studies has been shown to be associated with diabetes, heart disease, rheumatoid arthritis. These studies have been done in men, women, children. Um, they've been done in Japan, America, you know, worldwide, right? Um, and so, so having a high, a high activity of this gene is very bad. It means you're gonna make a lot of oxylipins. You're gonna be likely to get diabetes. But <laughs> if you eat a bunch of soybean oil, your CRP levels will go down. And so this study is throwing a gigantic curveball into the thesis of the video that we're talking about because the fact is, if you increase people's linoleic acid levels, and some people, CRP is gonna go up, <laughs> inflammation is gonna go up, some people, inflammation is gonna go down, um, but, <laughs> Low inflammation in this case is bad, and high inflammation in this case is good. So now think about the thesis of the video, are seed oils inflammatory? Well, it's sort of complicated, isn't it? <laughs> and so anyway, and so then that begs the question. So then, okay, but what about the other half of all the people, right? One out of five is over here. One out of three is over here. Then about half of the people are in the middle. They have one copy of this gene. They have one copy of the bad gene. And so they're gonna have some intermediate risk between the two groups and we don't really know, you know, if you look at their little egg acid levels, they're kind of right in the middle of the two. And so, and so 80% of the people are, 80% of people do not have two good copies of this gene. 
80% of the people are not protected against diabetes is what I would say. So in 80% of people, there is some risk that you're converting a lot of linoleic acid to oxylipins via high D6D activity levels. D6D activity levels cause diabetes. They cause rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory disease. Now, the study gets even better. It just keeps on giving. So like I was saying, if you, if you take the people with the, with the good genes, with low D6D activity, on their baseline diet, which is very low in linoleic acid, only about 10 grams a day, um, they have low levels of oxylipins. If you look at the people with the TT genetics, on their baseline diet, also only 10 grams of linoleic acid a day, they have much higher levels of oxylipins. But when you increase the amount of linoleic acid in the diet from 10 grams to 30 grams, the amount of oxylipins in both groups goes up substantially. And in fact, even with the good genes, when you go from 10 grams of linoleic acid to 30 grams of linoleic acid, even the people with the good genes end up with higher levels of oxylipins than the people with the bad genes at 10 grams of intake. And of course, people with the bad genes at 30 grams of linoleic acid have the highest level of oxylipins. And so, and so you can see in the, in the paper talks about this, this effect of, of genes and diet and they're both acting together. So, so uh, the copy of the gene that you have affects how much linoleic acid is, con is converted to oxylipins and the amount of linoleic acid that you consume affects how much linoleic acid is converted to oxylipins. And I just want to expound on this a little bit more because I know people will, people on the other side of the argument will watch this video and say, you can't talk about D6D, that's a genetic thing. It doesn't have anything to do with diet. But, you know, as I just explained, it's the whole reason, I mean, D6D only does one thing. It just converts, it just starts this process of converting linoleic acid to oxylipins. That's its whole job. And we know that people that have high D6D activity have more oxylipins. And we know that people with high D6D activity are more likely to get diabetes and are more likely to get rheumatoid arthritis. And so what other reason, <laughs> what, what other reason could uh, D6D be causing diabetes than the fact that it's making more arachidonic acid and more oxylipins. Like, that's all it does. It just has one job. And so, one way to make it go faster is to have the wrong genes, but the other way to go make it go faster is to eat more linoleic acid. And so, uh, critics will say, this is, this, this, this my video was about diet and you're talking about an enzyme and a genetic thing, but they work together. Um, one way to increase throughput through D6D is to eat more linoleic acid. And that is why this, this, this genetic thing, this gene variant is so interesting because it tells us so much about, you know, Again, I showed that clip in the video where he says, in fact, none of us have any idea what these things will do on our metabolism in general. But in fact, we know, we know very well that if we're making more of these, we're more likely to get diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis.